Hello, this is Christy. Welcome to another tutorial for Zara Designer Pro X. In this one, I'm going to walk you through the photo editing tools in Zara Designer Pro. And now I hear you say, okay, Zara Designer Pro is not Photoshop. It doesn't really do much photo editing, but if you're in a bind, you can still use some of the basic adjustments and photo tools in Zara, and maybe it will surprise you. I have imported a photo here. It's a it's weird, really weird photo with like a um, purple kind of look. I got this on Unsplash. And let me show you how you can edit photos in, in Zara. Obviously, I am here on a new document that has a normal page on it, and I just drag this photo in here. Nothing special has happened here. You don't have to open a sort of different type of document or anything. You just drag the photos in here. In fact, I have other photos open here on another page in another document, more photos at the same time. I'm gonna show you how these work. So let's get back to this one. So the photo editing tools are hidden away here in the photo uh, tool tab so you can see all of these tools in here but today we're just going to look at this main one so if you click on enhance photos this is the very first option in this menu you will see this toolbar at the top changing this is the info bar if for some reason for you it doesn't turn on maybe you have removed it by mistake in which case you can just right click on the toolbar here and tick info bar look at this it disappears look at this it's coming back so now with this photo selected here you can now access all of these adjustments in Zara for this selected photo so let's start from start uh, from the left here this is obviously a zoom option you can zoom one on one to see the photo in real pixel size and or you can scale it to a hundred percent which will actually cover your entire document here depending on the DPI of the photo I don't want it to be that large so I'm just gonna make it small again here we go it's on my page zooming in you don't have to actually zoom in or out you just you know helps you see them better so back to the photo editing uh, photo enhancements rather menu so all of these adjustments here are readily available for you so let's start from the beginning of course this is the brightness tool so all you have to do is just click on this little arrow next to the value field and just drag this slider look at this it makes it darker or brighter this is more like an exposure if you want so you know don't go crazy with this because it's a very powerful tool if you want to go back to the previous value if you didn't like what you got there you just type zero in this box and press enter and that brings your photo back then you've got the contrast photo contrast again you know you do a stronger contrast go crazy or less contrast so these are maybe the primary ways you you're gonna you know kind of play with your photos the next one is the shadow brightness so if you have darker areas in your photo you want to brighten them up so like this line of trees here in this mountain maybe this tree uh, let me just zoom in a bit more and of course the photo is still selected let's see if I want to bring the shadows up a bit all you have to do is just click on that and bring it up I'm gonna exaggerate here just to show you how the tool works obviously in a normal photo you probably wouldn't be dragging this so far high so depending on the need for your photo to adjust it you may get it kind of go like in the 50 range or whatever so this brings up your shadows the darker areas in your photo and kind of leaves the bright areas is unaffected which is not what this next one does which is again the opposite of that tools which brings the highlights brightness so if you have specific areas in your photos that are too bright you can use this one to bring them down and look at this the brighter area that that piece of cloud there it gets darker so this tool actually works from 100 percent downward so by default it's to it the value is 100 so if you want to bring the brightness down of the highlights not the entire photo you just drag this all the way down here so you notice one of the areas is getting dark like this so let's move on there is the next one here that's it's it's an x process effect it's called I'm honestly not sure what this one does I'll let you be the judge so if I bring it down it kind of removes all the reds and kind of leaves you with this green kind of hue if you go back up it kind of over you know it's like it creates a bit of a contrast in the photo 
and saturation at the same time kind of a polarizing there i don't know i'm not sure what this does i should probably look in the manuals but anyway i'm just going to leave this one to zero and then you've got one again that you're going to start you're going to use a lot probably the photo saturation click this it's going to be at zero by default so if you pull it all the way up you know it's going to oversaturate and you know psychedelic kind of effect on your photo if you go the other way you can even turn your photo black and white like this you know grayscale so this this might be nice for some nice um you know vintage effects if you like so let's go back to normal now and then there's another one here with the photo temperature so now if you shoot some photos that you don't use the white balance very well you know in your in your cameras maybe a, a photo is looking kind of too cool you know or too warm and i'm going to show you one example of that in a minute you can tweak the temperature so that makes your photo colder you notice that the yellows and the greens kind of go away and you've got the blue mostly so this is a very cold um, winter morning if you want and then if you go up to all the way to the right it warms it up a bit so now it looks more like a you know nice summer evening or something like that so this is pretty much what this does of course this works nice with the saturation so if you want to bump up the saturation while you're doing the temperature there you you know you can really make your photo pop don't exaggerate though so it depends on the effects you want to achieve finally there is, I'm gonna skip this one for now, but there's another one here. This is the blur or sharpness. So if you wanna blur your photo, let me just zoom in here so you can see the effect. I'm gonna zoom in on the tree here because there's a lot of detail on it. So if you use the blur versus sharpness, and you turn to the left then it's going to blur your photo you notice like this if you turn it to the right it's going to sharpen it so you know notice the detail on the uh, the mountain and the tree really is very very well you know emphasized so this will this will sharpen your photo if we look at these details in the back here um so watch this this is the original photo and this is the sharp i kind of like the way that zara does the sharpening on this and finally let's go back to this one this is a photo hue so notice that my photo is kind of a purple hue and i've kind of bumped up the, the temperature on it so it's kind of purple but maybe i'm not happy maybe i want to give it a different tint you know so this one it opens a hue dialog here with a strength so by default the strength is zero so whatever you change here is not going to affect your photo but watch what happens if i put the strength up it now colors the entire photo in the hue that i selected in the top slider so if now i'm on the green you notice mo my photo is green obviously if i go way up you know it kind of exaggerates the color there let's move it to the yellow so you notice it's now yellow like a des desert and or red or you go back to the blues and the dark blues and the purple and the red so this gives a an overall hue of the photo nothing you haven't seen before i'm sure so this one bumps up the strength again if you take all the way down then of course this doesn't do anything so you're back to your normal photo one very helpful button is this compare button here which you know when you're playing with these options you don't know you know maybe you you apply different effects here and maybe different uh, changes and you kind of go crazy with all the sliders and at some point you're going to end up with a version of the photo that is way different from where you started so if you want to see how far you've gone or you want to see how the original photo looked this is the compare button this is what it does so click on it once this will give you your original photo click again and it will apply the effects that you've selected and the values that you've selected so far on this photo so click compare you can see it so you can kind of go through uh, between the two so if you're happy you just leave it like this i'm going to show you another one although i may actually cover this in a different video because this is the brightness levels dialogue so let me just compare this and go back to my photo my original photo and now go back to the levels you can find this actually in the in the dialogue here in the flyout menu directly to the levels and it's going to bring this 
menu up. This actually allows you to adjust the photo using brightness um, levels or, you know, input of uh, light of white and input of black. And thankfully, it also has the gray input slider in the middle here. So this is very nice because some programs don't have that, but this one has it like the Photoshop has it. So this is quite cool. I mean, even for this levels adjustment and the curves, it is worth uh, editing, uh, quick edits in, in Zara because that kind of helps you correct photos. So let me show you what I mean. I have two other videos on my channel that discuss this levels kind of uh, notion in Photoshop and XN View. Now Photoshop, as I said, has the dark and light and midtones. Uh, XN View only has the dark and light, doesn't have the midtones. So that's that's a little limited. But let me show you what the levels do. You notice this kind of curve here that looks kind of like a mountain, I guess. That's what I like to think about. So you've got the starting input levels of light and dark. And you notice that the mountain, as it were, kind of stops here. So this area here is there's no input there. So what you want to do is pull the white to the beginning, the base of that mountain there and the dark again the same way, but the other direction. To the beginning and then you adjust the midtones to bring your photo up or down in terms of kind of brightness so what this does is it adjusts your photo if it's underexposed overexposed a bit you've got different levels of of gray and dark and, and light in your photos and what this also does is you can also do an automatic so it kind of brings your photo to a more normal level um, colors right so this is what this does you can uh, significantly uh, improve your photo with just the level adjustment forget the brightness forget the contrast the levels are quite powerful actually and you can either edit them together as rgb and do an auto and then you see what it does but if you're not happy you can actually edit every channel individually so i can adjust my reds i can adjust the greens and I can adjust the blue. And you notice that I pressed auto and it, and it kind of did what I told you to do, bring the levels to the start and end of the mountain thingy shape. Okay, so if I undo this, um, let me just bring this photo back in. So just to make sure the photo is uh, not touched. So to demonstrate the same theory, uh, using these level adjustments. So go back to photos, levels, or you can access it from here, you know, same thing. So now let me let me just go to the uh, red again and bring it to the edges of the mountain, the start of the mountain. If I'm not happy with it, I want more red into it. I can pull the middle middle range there. Now switch to the green channel and do this saying, bring it to the start. Forget about this other shape that kind of changes. You just want to edit the uh, main shape, bring the colors to the start of this mountain. So this is almost like a surefire way to quickly improve and adjust your photo. Now, if this is too cold, uh, which means it's too much blue, you can bring the blue down. Now, probably there's too much green. Go back to the green channel and maybe pull that down a bit. And then there you have it. So now my photo is, you know, this is the original. This is the adjusted version. You see, it looks a little more natural. I'm not sure if the photographer that took this photo actually took it with this color in there. I'd be surprised, maybe it's a sunset or something. But anyway, the levels adjustments help you kind of quickly uh, tweak your photo. When you're done doing the channels, you can go back to the joined RGB and play with the lighting a bit if you want, you know, like this. Maybe play with the saturation at the top there, like this, and maybe the temperature just, you know, get it a bit warmer, a bit cooler whatever. So there you go. I mean, you can still do uh, more things with photo edits in Zara Designer Pro. Um, I haven't shown you the healing tool. I'm going to do a video for that and the clone and magic erase. I have a video on my channel and the cropping and you've got this effect painter, which is really cool and all these effects. So I'm going to cover those in a future video. But this was the basic photo editing and enhancement controls 
in Zara Designer Pro. As you can see, it's obviously not Photoshop, but you can still get quite a lot of bang for your buck if you're stuck, if you don't have any other software, and of course, stay away from paint. <laughs> and, um, you know, it still helps you to uh, edit some photos, basic edits, and use them in your projects. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about these functions, or if you have any suggestions, or would like to decide what would be the next tutorial I should do, feel free to leave it in the comments. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe now for more videos. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for your time. See you next time.